This is the bubbling rocks experiment. Okay, now we're gonna be using a particular form of rock for my version. You can use limestone. Um, we're not gonna use that right now. We're gonna use chalk, but chalk is actually made pretty much of limestone. So this is the chalk especially used. When I was a little boy at school, the teachers used to use this to draw on the chalkboard. Now often we don't use this sort of stuff, but it's, we can still buy it. It's easy to get, art shops sell it, stationers sell it, so it's no problem getting hold of it right now. So this is chalk, okay? What I'm just gonna do is break a few pieces just into this little plate here. Just, okay, just break a couple of bits up. Okay, and we have maybe a whole piece too. So, what I want you to do is then find a container. I'm gonna use a glass, only because I want you to see what's happening inside. I'd probably recommend using an ordinary, say, plastic container of some kind, because it's a bit safer. But I want you to see what's happening now that I'm showing you, okay? So I'm using a good glass. And now I'm gonna use some vinegar. As you can see in this container, there's clear vinegar. This is distilled vinegar, but we don't need to use this. We could actually use ordinary brown vinegar, malt vinegar. I want to use this for a similar reason. I'm using the glass, actually, because I want you to be able to see what's going on inside. So I do recommend clear vinegar for this experiment. So I want you to pour some vinegar into your container in the same way that I am. I'm gonna fill this one up pretty much. Okay, so remember this is just clear vinegar. And all I want you to do is pick up some of your chalk and drop it in the vinegar. So hopefully this is what you noticed happen. Let's put the bigger one in. As you can see, almost immediately, bubbles, lots and lots of bubbles are forming. And bubbling up through the vinegar, it's getting a bit misty in there now, isn't it? But the bubbles are bubbling up from the chalk and bubbling up to the surface. So what's going on? Well, your vinegar is actually an acid, quite a strong acid actually, but it's not a dangerous acid because we put it on our food, don't we? I put it on our chips, for example. So it doesn't, this acid won't do any, too much damage to you, but it is an acid. And it's got a particular acid in here called acetic acid. Okay, so there's different sorts of acid, acetic acid. Your chalk or piece of limestone, if you'd used a piece of limestone, is mostly made of something called calcium carbonate. Okay, calcium carbonate. And when you drop calcium carbonate into acid, you can see what happens. Lots of little bubbles are formed. Now what's happening now is there's a chemical reaction going on between the calcium carbonate in the chalk and the acetic acid in the vinegar, and they're reacting together. It's like an, what we call an acid-base reaction. They're reacting together, and in the process, they're giving off lots and lots of gas as a product of that reaction. So they're giving off carbon dioxide gas in this case, and carbon dioxide gas is coming off as thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny, tiny bubbles that you hopefully can see, when you did this experiment especially, coming up from the bits that you dropped into your vinegar, okay? So the acid is dissolving away the chalk, and it, as it does it, lots of gas is being given off. Over time, if we watch this for long enough, and if you could do this, maybe for another 10, 20 minutes, or just come back in a little while, you'll see that the bits of chalk that you put in begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller as the acid dissolves the calcium carbonate away. The reaction keeps on going and keeps on going. And eventually, they will actually totally disappear. So what about some variables, things we can change to see what's gonna happen? Well, you might notice here, I've got some colored chalk. I used white chalk for this particular experiment, as you know. I wonder what would happen with colored chalk. Is it likely to still work, I wonder? What about if we use 
different size fragments. Now we've already used about two different sizes. I broke this into a few bits already, all a similar size, and I put a one whole piece in. But what about maybe making it even smaller fragments? What about even powdering it? If, if you've got a pestle and mortar, you can put it in and bash it up, and make it into small bits of powder, and drop that in. I wonder what that would do. What about if we used different concentrations of vinegar? I've just put neat vinegar out of this, is this container here. What about if we maybe watered it down? So for example, if we put half water and half vinegar, I wonder what that would do. What about if we change the temperature? This is just cold vinegar, it's just in this room right now, so this is room temperature. What about if we heated it up? Again, not so hot that you can't touch it, but make it hot enough you can touch, but use hot vinegar, what would that do? And what about freezing cold vinegar out of the fridge? I wonder how that would work. I'm sure you can think of a few more things.